Hello viewers, if you're out there, and welcome again to uh, another Ask the Monkey uh, Geek Sesh. Please forgive the uh, unusual audio setup today. You'll see I'm speaking through the performance mic. This is the mic I, I use rarely for my uh, beat shows. Usually no vocals on those at all, but when there are, this is the mic that gets employed. Um, not as opposed to my usual um, Plantronics headset, which I usually use for the talk shows, um, which is down for the, some reason. I don't know. I forget. It crashed right before, of course. So, anyways, hope this uh, hope this will do. It's uh, probably going to be kind of a short show. I uh, got some cool stuff planned today, so uh, tune in for that. So uh, hold on just a second here. So one of the uh, unfortunate side effects is I'll have to reach off screen to uh, to mute myself. So please forgive me for that. I think I'm spiking the vocals a little bit. Okay, so uh, let's see. I'm going to do a quick recap. If you haven't been to the show before, I'll bring you up to date on what kind of crazy stuff we're looking at over here and over here. And where's that other th other thing? Where is that? Oh, over here. Cameras up. That's good. <coughs> but uh, first, in the background, rather than uh, beats, uh, as much as I enjoy the uh, beat Pete um, vinyl sessions and playing those on the show, they tend to get tagged by Twitch, which um, complicates exporting them and stuff. And uh, if they make it that far, they tend to get tagged by YouTube, which means they're going to get spammed up with ads and all that. So. Pardon me, so uh, tonight's show, uh, today's show, uh, background sound is actually provided by the new Sonic Monkey Pie, which you see acknowledged uh, down there in that green text on the screen. Um, if you've been following the show, uh, we actually were working on that on the previous episode. <coughs> Pardon me, as I've, I've, as I've confessed uh, before on this show, uh, I hardly ever talk to anyone, so my beat shows there's no talking and uh, this this show is the one time a week that I actually use my voice so it's kind of funny uh, so it takes me a little time to get back up to speed anyways last couple of episodes of this show um, one of the projects we've been working on is a uh, Raspberry Pi incarnation of my traditional sound toy uh, Sonic Monkey there's an Android version of that uh, already a couple versions of it uh, you can find in the Play Store uh, sorry, uh, Android Play Store. No iPhone version yet. <coughs> I've made other incarnations for other platforms, too. I've always had a box in my house that played um, ambient droning sound, and it's gone through a couple different incarnations. This latest version is uh, relying upon the Freesound API, which you can read about at freesound.org. And that is the text that you see overlaying me and uh, the other part of the screen there sometimes. Um, that's the uh, acknowledgments to the people who actually uh, generated the samples uh, which are being used um, for the background sound. Now, actually it's playing like three or sometimes up to four of them and mixing them at different volumes and fading them in and out. Uh, so that's why you get the effect of sometimes it sounds like there might be wind chimes in a, in a train station in France uh, with a Buddhist monk or something like that all at once. I take that kind of stuff. So uh, there is uh, some of the code for that. If you're interested in, in how to do that, is available at my GitHub drafts, GitHub.com/slash/diemastermonkey, and uh, all of this stuff is mentioned on my profile. So check out the Twitch profile for more information there. And I'm out of coffee already. Let's see, how long have we been live? Woo, nine minutes, yeah. Well, six of that was me trying to figure out what the heck was up with the audio. All right, um, so that explains the background sound. That's Sonic Monkey Pie. Uh, in the top, you'll see it, uh, choosing sounds from the Freesound API based on a set of keywords. We went all through this. Uh, check out previous. The previous two episodes were all about Sonic Monkey Pie, and it'll probably come back soon. I'm working on some further enhancements to it. In the meantime, it, it does quite a good, well, a great job of uh, 
suiting my purposes of providing a constant background carpet. Um, like a, I kind of like that undercurrent of background sounds. So, anyways, thank you, Freesound uh, API and the Freesound community for that. And thank you, uh, Larry Wall, for writing Pearl, which the prototype is written in. <laughs> and uh, thank you, the author of Socks. I can't remember his name. So, other fun stuff. Uh, you know what, actually, today's show, I was really planning on working on the Raspberry Pi version of the Internet Toy Box. And the Internet Toy Box is the infamous... Um, audience-controlled remote control cameras and such. Um, I can show you how that works, for instance. I have here my mobile phone. I'm logged into the chat right now. And uh, this is a whole big thing. If you want to know how it works, go check out uh, hackaday.io slash diemastermonkey. And um, it's got it's it's got its own dedicated dedicated project there and, and stuff so plenty of information there now uh, what I just typed into the uh, chat was a stage right which changes the position of the stage camera over here so any user in the in the chat can type that and um, there's a whole thing about how that works it's all covered on the project site hackaday.io slash diemastermonkey and um, You'll see how that uh, how that works. Now I'm typing in stage left in the chat. Let's see, you can see it in the chat right there. I typed in stage left and stage right. Oh, it's going to be backwards for you though. Anyways, um, and it shows my EFF sticker. All right. So uh, I am in the chat, um, by the way, which is rare. So <laughs> I apologize if you've ever come to the show and I I didn't know you were there. I'm usually pretty busy, anyways, on the show. So, okay, the rest of the uh, uh, desktop that you're looking at here, actually, so you're seeing the stage camera is showing one view of this, which we're going to get to in a minute. Uh, that's an Atmel uh, AT Tiny 85 running an incarnation of the IQ0 genetic algorithm robot. So that's the topic of today's show, so don't worry about that. Plenty of talk to be had on that. This is um, the actually not the Raspberry Pi that's uh, providing the uh, background sound. Um, wait, what is this one doing up there? Oh, this is the one that I've been using for the Raspberry Pi version of uh, Internet Toy Box, which I'm having a, a, a little bit of a glitch with, so we're not going to play with that today. <coughs> Pardon me again. Uh, actually, the one that's running Sonic Monkey Pi is, is this one right here uh, with no... <laughs> it's just sitting there with bare metal, no case or anything. <coughs> it's just got an Ethernet connection, uh, USB power supply, and uh, audio out, of course. <coughs> Pardon me, that's going to be horrible, me clearing my throat. I actually mastered the talent of muting uh, when I cleared my throat and stuff, but now I have to reach way over there to do it. Trust me, you don't want me to hit the mic, it's, it's really clicky. All right, so... On with the show, now that we've uh, covered all the introductions. Oh, and what's running uh, Internet Toy Box right now? This uh, Arduino Uno, which is a little bit off screen. It's actually a SparkFun breadboard. Um, and you see some simplistic wiring there, which is wiring it to uh, this little guy known as the model toy, and, and this, which is a light up, tiny spotlight users can control, as well as the stage camera. Um, the uh, desk camera, so-called the closed cam, is not hooked up right now because I, I want it fixed because that's where we're going to be working. Okay, so actually all of my shows, these cameras are, are enabled, usually all of them, so that people can move the camera around because sometimes my show gets boring. <coughs> so, speaking of which, uh, so sitting in this little uh, cardboard box here, uh, I'm going to say this is an Atmel AT Tiny 85. Uh, we could look that up on the website. Why don't we do that? That might be fun. Give my voice a little break there too. By the way, how are you guys? Hope you're doing well. And hope uh, everybody's taking all this craziness in the American elections with a grain of salt. If you're out there in the international community, we're not all this crazy. We just have a funky sense of humor. Forgive us. It's uh, it's not a big deal. Don't don't freak out. <laughs> we do crazy shit sometimes. 
we got pro wrestling and stuff, right? So. And uh, Iggy Azalea. We got lots of crazy stuff. All right. What are we looking for? At Mel. Uh, AT Tiny 85. Uh, da -da 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 -da. That's my old music. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, well, good enough. Here's the uh, Outmail page on their ET Tiny 85. Um, this is one of these weird form factor that they have. But uh, it's not much to look at anyways. Actually, you, well, you should be able to... I should show you a picture of it, right? I mean, at a minimum, I should show you what it looks like. I mean, there is one right here. The thing is, you're, you might not quite see it. It's really tiny. It's a teensy tiny little thing. Uh, that's a large one. Here it is. This is what it looks like. So there's an uh, Atmel AT Tiny 85. It's an A pin DIP um, AVR microprocessor. <coughs> Super easy to use and uh, runs at 8 megahertz or faster if you use an external crystal. It has an internal 8 megahertz crystal, which you can also run at 1 megahertz. Um, uh, doesn't need a lot of power. I think 3.5 volts you might be able to even run it in a low power mode. It um, runs, um, let's see, what does it have? I think 8 KB of RAM. Uh, is it 8? Man, it might be less. It might be 4096, 4096 bytes or something. Let's get back to the spec sheet. Um, forgive my uh, frame rate, which is going to suffer a bit as I load that. So. <clears throat> well, here we go. Uh, flash memory, 8K, uh, 8 pins, 20 megahertz maximum operating uh, frequency. That's with an external uh, chip, by the way. Um, I think you might be getting a much, bit much of the background sound there. Sorry. Uh, let's see, where were we? The CPU is an 8-bit AVR microprocessor. It has... Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I've read this spec sheet on the air before. That's why, I, if I sound bored, I think that's why I'm bored. Okay, so read the, go read the spec sheet. <laughs> so that's, open. that's not the fun part of them. I mean, the fun part is they're like a buck fifty, And you can do all kinds of cool stuff with them. They're like, you know, 70% of the stuff you could do with an Arduino... Uh, you can do with this, and, and the Arduino is based on the same family of AVR chips. Anyways, we're digress digressing a little bit. Um, oh, I should have kept that window open, so I could have segued to uh, IQ0. So IQ0, also a project which you will find on hackaday.io slash diamastermonkey. Um, actually, winner of the... <laughs> Uh, winner of the 2016 Adafruit Hackaday.io Pi Zero contest, um, and I am still working on the Pi Zero incarnation of that. It's all the thing though, because it's completely different. Holy crap! 111 people are following that project. That's like the most popular thing I've ever done. Anyways, so here's a diagram on here. You'll find at the project site again Hackaday.io slash DiamasterMonkey. And you'll find this diagram, which I'm going to load in a thing so that... No, I'm not. Will, I pray there we go. Wish not one man more. By Jove, I am not covetous for gold. So, what do you guys have to have? Hey, you know what? I've been thinking about playing games um, on the show. And the funny thing is I don't even really usually play games much. Um, but not quite games. Like, I have some stuff in mind. But... Let me know what you guys would uh, think of that. If you think I could also do a gaming show on Twitch, what? Could I do a gaming show on Twitch? What a weird idea. All right, so, <laughs> so check out this uh, this diagram for a minute. I'll let you um, think about that while I get some, some more coffee here in the uh, Mr. Spock, Spock commemorative coffee cup um, and you'll see the basic model that IQ0 is using um, 
actually, and this is a good this is a good thing to cover too because the left hand side is still applicable, but the right hand side actually I've I've kind of wandered away from a little bit, and that is what I intend to do in today's show is to get back to this PRNG generated command set model that I was using at first. There were some really, I think, some really important advantages in that that I, I might have strayed away from, and I want to get back to them. And you'll see, because we're, we're going to look at the code a little bit. So um, check out this diagram. Again, hackaday.io slash diemastermonkey is where you're, you'll find all the rest of the stuff and other incarnations of the robot and the code and all kinds of stuff. So check this out. I'm going to take five minutes, maybe maybe even ten. Yeah, I've been on for 20 minutes. Like I said, I talk once a week, and it's this show, so my throat's getting a little dry. I'm going to get some coffee, a little more water. I'm going to turn up the background sounds a little bit and check out this diagram and the URL if you like. Thanks for tuning in. If you are, also shout-outs to my replay viewers and lurkers, lurkers power the channel. Thanks for tuning in, Time Master Monkey. <coughs> the left-hand side of this diagram. All you're seeing is a simplified uh, explanation of the process of evolution by means of natural selection and random mutation. Pardon me, random mutation and natural selection. I don't know, chicken, egg, egg, chicken, whatever. So, <coughs> we all know how this works random mutations uh, in uh, individual offspring or selected for or against by factors in the environment and other organisms, competition for mating, etc., etc., competition for resources, and the ones that tend to succeed have a higher likelihood of passing on their genes. This same mechanism is implemented in the code for pretty much any genetic algorithm based solution and it is so in the case of IQ0. <clears throat> now on the right hand uh, side as I alluded to before you see a more procedural baked breakdown of how the logic works internally. Sorry and as I, I did it allude before um, this is no longer how the logic works internally. Uh, I sort of deviated from this a little bit recently as I was moving to a class-based data structure and I regret having done so. Um, so, uh, actually I was planning for today's show to, um, to kind of work that back towards this. Um, so, what were we doing actually before I, I can explain how this works. I'll use this here Linux box. So this is, oops, I forgot this is the keyboard with a stuck E key. All right, so this is the Linux box that I was using for, man. Oh, man, all right. Um, so this is the Linux box I was using for um, Raspberry Pi version of Internet Toy Box. But, um, at the moment, we'll use it for this because it's got Perl on it. I think, yeah, good enough. All right. Now, as I recall, the, um, the Perl function for let's see, let's do this right. Uh, okay. By the way, that's a quick way to start a, a script. You could do the same thing with like which PHP or something, right? Then you can do this way. You can do this. Um, and it's already in there, which is handy. So, thank you. Matt Height taught me that track, I think. So, um, so, right, with Perl, you do something like this. Um, you usually, uh, get a random number. Uh, is it rand? <laughs> uh, let's find out first. Actually, let's get back to this. I'm going to go back to the command line. Um, I think this is how it works. Nope, it, it might just be rand. Yeah, okay. All right, in Perl, the, uh, the command uh, rand3 will give you a random number between uh, 0 and 2, one presumes. And it's not an integer, I think we could just do that. Yeah, and then we get an integer version. Okay, so uh, we could do this, like... all day, oops, except for this glitch here. <laughs> I 
do do no space. Okay, there we go. So now it's spitting out random numbers. Okay, random string of numbers, right? Um, so the, the numbers are generated, you know, I talked about PRNGs on another show and we talked about the fallacy of randomness on, in deterministic systems like a digital computer. How the hell could something be random? Everything has a precedent, right? So, um, but nonetheless, we what counts for random in a digital computer is a long string of um, numbers that is difficult to predict. And that's close enough. I mean, you know, for functional purposes, what's the difference? <coughs> Pardon me. Well, it's going to be hard to get by with no mute. Uh, again, uh, if you're just tuning in, I apologize, but the usual vocal mic is off. I'm using the stage mic, which I never use. Um, in any case, so we're, and we're watching Pearl spit out a random string of numbers between 0 and 2 inclusive. Um, so, as I covered before, the way it gets this number is by using a, um, a some sort of seed value to figure out where to begin in a long list of basically a long list, list of numbers since it's going to be generated by a formula. Um, so uh, how does it get those numbers? Sorry, I forgot what the syntax was. Rand, right. So how does it get those? Uh, where does, how does it figure out where to begin uh, in that list? Well, um, it uses uh, what's called a seed um, value. So uh, one moment. I have, I have real world stuff. And I'm back. Okay. Well, my roommate's just come back, which means there's going to be a little noise. But actually, like I said, I don't think the show will be long because of the sound problems. I may come back and do, um, you know, like no vocal stuff. I'll just type on the screen. And I'll, anyways. Okay. So uh, this, this program is going to do the same thing, right? It does exactly except um, except it's going to spit out like. Uh, uh, 10 at a time, right? So I'm going to write a quick thing that's going to split spit out 10 at a time, and um, you're going to see how the results change when I use the seed value. So you see the uh, srand command in Perl, and there's equivalent commands in pretty much every programming language that have PRNG capabilities, uh, sets the seed value for this PRNG functionality. And as I said, you can you find plenty of information about PRNGs like uh, uh, 
there's a great article on Wikipedia, and it's a, it's a pretty standard computer, si computer science topic, so you might want to check into how it works, and it's also a lot of fun, and has tremendous uh, relevance and utility to things like procedural generation and such. And encryption. So you'll know when we use the seed 1, 2, 3, 4, we get 14, 4, 6, 6, 19, 5, 0, 10, 11, 5 from the RAND. That's correct. The RAND function. That's what it's giving us. Why did I put 20? I was trying to put 10. It's supposed to be a random number between 0 and 9. Okay. 7, 2, 3, 3, 9. All right. If we run it again, we get 7, 2, 3, 3, 9. It's the exact same number, right? Right. Isn't that kind of cool? If you think about it, that means... For example, I like to do this. It's fun. Instead of doing that, we're going to block generate a block of 512 of them and just print them all out. It's going to be cool, right? Wait, actually, I want one of these here. Uh, wait, um, that's. Oops, <laughs> put that in the wrong place. Hey, you, you guys should see the screen I'm working on. It's really tiny. It's like seven inches something. That's why I usually use the other computer over there. It's my usual machine. This is just the stream machine. Um, okay, there we go. Now you got a block of 512 random digits, and they are the same every time. That's the cool part, right? See? 7233392 blah 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 blah, right? Like uh, this last feature digit is 0938, 0938 every time. Right, which is cool. So if you need to recall this number sequence, you can re recall this five block of 512 numbers with the combination of this seed value and this randomization function. So this seed value and this function, right? Um, and that, you're like, why the hell are you telling me all about this? And because that's actually how, I'm trying to get a window so I can show you that diagram again. Oops, not what I wanted. Well, you guys saw the diagram at hackaday.io slash monkey. I don't even have a browser window open. This machine is very constrained, so um, try to avoid that. Well, so back at the um, hackaday.io slash monkey, you'll find the diagram. Uh, master monkey. You'll find the diagram that uh, correlates to what I was just explaining. This... Uh, is where the instruction set for IQ0 comes from. It actually is generated by the pseudo-random number generator. And if that wasn't available on this platform, I would use any, um, you know, um, number generating sequence, like a Fibonacci sequence will do, or something like that. Anything that has a low computational cost. Um, I've implemented this same design on multiple platforms and I find the PRNG is a convenient way to do it because they're often very optimized on a platform like they expect it to be run often. So it'll be good at generating 512 random numbers really quickly based on the seed. So um, how does this relate to that? Well, okay, in evolution, uh, an organism's DNA is determined, uh, or well, it's an organism's DNA determines its developmental behavior, right, and also its morphology, um, and uh, that's what you will see in the. Wait, I hope you guys are seeing this. Make sure check your screen, yeah. And that's what you see happening in IQ zero. You see this value here, which is part of the genetic algorithm, the organism uh, called seed, and that's the seed value. The seed value is the is provided to the PRNG a six zero four eight, which is used to generate the DNA. Actually, in most contexts, it's the command set, but it also provides some of the basic properties uh, of the thing. And while you've been watching, that's what's been happening over here on this Admel AT Tiny eighty five. As I pointed out, um, as I mentioned earlier, it might be a little weird. Um, since I say this is an AT Tiny 85, and I'm like, wait, that doesn't look like an AT Tiny 85. That's because it's it's actually sitting in this here. Uh, no, there's no way to show you guys. I'm sorry. 
it's mounted in this uh, Spark Fun product, which is called the USB Tiny uh, Programmer. It's really cool, and it's like 20 bucks, and I do recommend it. Mine's been through a war or two, so <laughs> forgive the hack uh, repair job that it's been through. But basically, it's just a quick way to uh, program your your AppMel uh, chips over USB. If they're assuming they're eight pin chips, and is without having to build a separate programmer, which you can do anyways with your Uno, um, and I've done. But so there's one running in here right now. But this is not the only form of the IQ zero, and you may you'll know, find on the YouTube. You find youtubecom slash monkey There's robots, um, videos of other robots built on the same, um, uh, on the exact same code. I mean, I just prom the chip, I take it out of here, and I put it in another robot. So in another form with different servos and things like that attached. So this one's job is to stimulate this passive infrared sensor. That's this white thing, which has been half masked off with black tape to make it difficult to stimulate. And uh, it has only this servo to do so. And you would think like the, it would just spin the whole time to stimulate the passive infrared sensor, but actually there's a penalty, or rather a cost, for using the servo. Um, so a smart solution would spin it as little as possible. Um, and it seems to be pretty, gotten down to a pretty good job of that. And we talk about how success in genetic algorithms kind of changes over time. It's a whole thing. But um, actually, it's a fast, that's a fascinating topic. But I already did 45 minutes. <laughs> and um, my, uh, my roommate's back. And uh, I'm on an open mic, so it's going to get noisy. And uh, so you think, you know what I think I'm going to do? Now that I explained all of that, uh, I'm going to close down the show for a while. Probably come back in a bit on this same channel and go into just deep code. So, like I said, I want to re-implement this original model, which was very successful at the time, and I've I've moved to a much more simplified model, which. I tell you the truth is sort of inspired by Carl Sims' original curve-based methodology. You can check out his work on YouTube. Carl Sims um, was instrumental in the development of a simulation called Breve, uh, which you might check out, or maybe it's called Breve. Um, and uh, I, you know, he, there, um, organisms, genetic algorithms in his application were very successful. Uh, the thing is to have some some advantages that mine don't have for one thing uh, they can reset their environment every time and my genetic algorithms live in the real world where they don't get to reset the environment every time so they I mean they proceed from wherever they left the world last so if they climb themselves up a hill they they have to be able to get back down a hill whereas um, in the breve simulation or in typical genetic algorithm simulations each generation starts at the bottom of the hill or something so, anyways, enough on that. Um, so this is the uh, current main line of the latest version, and this code is up on the uh, GitHub address. And uh, along with it, it as a sample uh, wiring diagram, and it it's really pretty straightforward anyways. Um, so you can check that out. All of that's up there. If you got an app mail and, uh, and you want to prom up your own and play around with this idea, have at it and uh, be my guest. It's all open sourced. And anyways, the um, instructions are also on my YouTube address on, in the form of several videos, so check those out. In any case, I, I think I'll be continuing work on this tonight. As I said, when uh, if you come back and you see me on here later, I won't be talking much because the mic is down, um, but uh, we will be working on this mainline loop and converting it back to the original methodology, which relied heavily on the PRNG. Hmm, a quick note about why I wandered away from that in the first place. Um, like I said, I've implemented this same algorithm on a couple of different platforms, and in Java too, as well, and in JavaScript. And I was surprised to find that on the app, now the PRNG function is really slow. It seems to really slow the thing down. Um, so I was wondering if I could get away from it. Um, by using curves and stuff instead. Anyways, um, we're going to play with that a bit more tonight. Thanks for tuning in, and um, stay low.
Stay true, stay low. Monkey out.